Have you ever seen anybody eat a bag of chips and they allow the chip dust to build up on their fingers? They just let it pile up for the entirety of the bag. And you almost have a panic attack because you really want that person to lick their fingers or clean them off with a wipe or something. Well, that's kind of how I feel when it comes to the action figure collector market at the moment. There are a lot of things that I think the OMs really need to clean up on. And while I'm at it, I'm going to debunk a lot of this regurgitated nonsense that a lot of the collector community just continues to tell each other when I personally disagree with it. So, and I know a lot of you guys are wondering exactly what I'm talking about. So I made a, a little news update video not too long ago where I talked about the new Batman versus Superman Batman action figure from McFarlane and how it had been completely sold out online. However, if you went on eBay and Amazon, there were some third party sellers offering the figure for anywhere from like really high 40s to low 60s. Uh, and, and they were just pre-orders. They didn't actually have the figures in hand. I said this before, but I think that's against policy. I'm not really going to get into it. But from what I remember, doing any type of pre-order on eBay is against policy. I'm not sure when it comes to Amazon. But I know for a fact uh, you can't do pre-orders on eBay. But that aside, what's really interesting is that a lot of people would just continue to say that they're the scalpers, right? It's people trying to flip figures. They'll buy them and then resell them online. I have a, a lot of trouble believing that, and I think I've done the math a couple of times when it comes to other collectibles, but just to give you guys an idea, this figure was retailing for $22.99, let's say with taxes, and uh, let's assume it was free shipping because they bought other stuff. It's bare minimum around like $25 just to purchase this figure. If you do the math on it, let's say uh, packaging uh, utensils or you know packaging tools, whatever, box, maybe bubble wrap, things of that nature, you're going to spend at least $2 on that even if you're buying wholesale uh, around two dollars and then let's talk about ebay fees which will probably be depending on how much you sell it for but at least another six to seven dollars plus shipping so just in getting the figure out of your hands you're probably going to be spending another i would say close to 15 dollars. you already paid 25 dollars for the figure itself you're looking at about 40 dollars 40 a little over 40 if you count account for gas and things of that nature so in reality i don't think that there are people out there buying this figure at 20 dollars and then reselling it online just to make a very small profit you're talking about anywhere from like five to ten dollars per figure most of these people and and the listings that i posted on today's video most of these sellers are selling multiples i'm talking anywhere from like two to five maybe six and sometimes even more than that so that leads me to believe that these are sellers with a pretty good capability they have pretty good capital meaning that uh, they probably have a small little ebay business they probably buy directly from mcfarlane i believe if you're buying a few thousand dollars worth of of his product i think you can actually get wholesale prices so i think that's exactly what's happening usually these ebay sellers for the most part they'll mark up their stuff by a little bit very similar to action figure uh, shops or uh, comic book shops that you know sell collectibles they usually mark them up by maybe like five dollars if the if the retail on a figure is 22.99 they might do like 24.99 26.99 somewhere along those lines so you kind of expect that because they're not buying in like large quantities so their markup is just a little bit more same thing with some of these ebay sellers if they're selling like marvel legends for let's say uh, the retail on them is like $24.99, they might charge up like four to five bucks. So maybe like $29.99, including shipping and everything. That's usually what happens. And I completely get it because they're not buying, you know, pallets and pallets of these figures, like maybe Walmart and Target are. But still, uh, usually what they tend to do if they see there's a lot, a lot of demand for these figures, they usually mark up their prices by quite a bit. And I just don't really understand why Hasbro and McFarlane continues to sell to these very small shops. And it's funny because a lot of the time people always say that we should support local. We should support these small little collectible shops or comic shops. But a lot of the time it's really costly for the consumer to continue buying from these small little places instead of just going to like Walmart and Target. And I also don't understand why Hasbro and all these bigger OMs continue to go to these small sellers. They make up a very small percentage of what they sell anyways and they could easily 
uh, go the route of just shipping these to like Walmart and Target, especially for figures that are going to sell out, just like the Batman v Superman uh, Batman figure from McFarland. That's just one example, but there have been many recently of these figures selling out or selling out everywhere and then eBay sellers out of nowhere having multiples of these in stock I, I think i saw a lot of that happen with the retro carded animated marvel legend series like the symbiote spider-man was a great example of that we saw this we saw sellers and this was at the beginning before the knockoff started being released we saw sellers have like up to you know 20 of these available at one point and they were selling for about like 40 dollars or 42 dollars again there's no way that somebody would buy these at retail and then try reselling them because the profit margins are so razor thin. You're talking about them maybe making like five to six dollars per figure. Now with the McFarlane figure, that uh, that profit margin is even slimmer just because the figures are much heavier nowadays and the price point for these is a little bit higher than they were back then. We saw this for a very long period of time as well with like the Clone Wars Black Series figures. These were, uh, I guess they got some sort of restock through certain retailers, but the biggest restock that I personally saw were a lot of these like smaller eBay sellers that were getting them, turning around and then selling them for about $30, even though the retail at that point, I think was like $22.99. So you get my drift. I just feel like a lot of the figures that are selling out through like the major distributors end up in the hands of these third party sellers. I know this is somewhat of a rant and I know I've uh, made this point probably a couple of times in different videos but the fact that it continues to happen and a lot of the uh, bigger manufacturers don't really care about it it's just kind of like they're throwing figures out they don't really care who's purchasing them i think it's really affecting uh the fan base and their customers and i feel like they need to pay closer attention to this because the era of just like a common scalper or just one person going out there and finding cool figures uh, whether it was like at Walmart or Target or wherever they could find him, GameStop, that era is done with. I think we're entering a new era of the smaller sellers being able to purchase multiples of these uh, conveniently, either directly from the manufacturer, from Hasbro, McFarlane, whoever it may be, Super 7, and then being able to uh, sell for slightly higher prices. But if the figure for any reason becomes very coveted or very limited, then they just mark up these prices astronomically high. And this Batman is a perfect example of that. Uh, some of the, the ones that are going for maybe like low 60s, where there's at least a little bit or a decent chunk of change to be made, and there's maybe one of them available, maybe that is uh, just one random scalper, one random reseller. But if they're selling multiples at a decent price point, like if they're only doubling them up, let's say they're going for about 45 to maybe $50 and even low 50s, I just have a very difficult time believing that they're just random buyers that, you know, pre-ordered their, their uh, figure from like GameStop or wherever it is that they were able to pre-order them from. There's just the profit margins, like I said, are too razor thin. But that's just my personal uh, uh, experience, my personal opinion. I'm very curious to see what you guys have to say. I know these rants tend to run a little bit longer, but I just feel like it's one of those things that McFarlane specifically, but just in general, these bigger companies really need to address and they need to take care of that because I, I feel like it's really affecting their consumer base. But only time will tell whether they're really interested in fixing it or at least addressing it. Let me know down below in the comment section what your guys' take is. And I thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next one.